Tonight's video is about Studio One 5.1 Retrospective Recording, specifically about the new retrospective MIDI recording. I'll also be talking about the audio version that has happened before and how both of those work. Stay tuned. All right, so before I get into this new retrospective record option that we have in Studio One 5.1, I want to ask you to please click that subscribe button below. I usually wait till the very end of the video to do this, but I'm going to try something new and ask you up front because I know a lot of people don't watch the whole video. While I hope you will watch the whole video, before you get there, click that subscribe button like the video, share it, whatever you have to do. I appreciate your support. Also, this happened today. If you can't see it, in Georgia, I voted. I'm sure you've been told a thousand times before to get out there and vote. Do it. I'll be the thousand and one request. So, moving right along, Studio One 5.1. Let's talk about this new retrospective MIDI record option that we have. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about the audio version that we've had for quite some time in the event that you didn't know that it was there. So looking at the options on the screen, if you go in your options advanced and then the audio tab, you'll see this pre-record uh, audio input. Now I currently have mine set to one minute. Honestly, before this video, I didn't have it set at all, and I've not really used the feature a lot. But I'm going to show you how this works. So you can see here on my uh, vocal track, I have record enabled. And I've got a loop set out here. I'm not in loop mode at all. I'm not in punch mode at all. I've just got my regular um, record option set for pre-roll and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to hit the play on the transport. So you can see I'm record enabled on this track, nothing else. But I'm not actually recording anything right now. I'm going to wait till we get out here around 10. I'm just kind of using that loop marker as a way to show kind of where we're at. So when we get out to 10, I'm going to hit the record button on the transport and we're going to start recording here. Now you can see, of course, that it's recording the audio as we go forward. So I'm going to go through about measure 14 and then I'm going to stop recording. Now I've stopped recording and I've stopped my playback. And ordinarily what we would expect that this is exactly what I've gotten right here at measure 10. I started recording, but let's say I needed to get back to the lead in. So I could come back a little bit and capture that tiny bit of audio right before what I actually recorded. And because I have that audio record set back to a minute, I can actually catch all of that. So if we go back to the beginning of this and I hit play, you can hear this. Hit the play on the transport so you can see I'm record enabled on this track. Well, that's all the stuff that I had recorded before I actually hit record, which was way out here at measure 10. So that's the way that it has worked before in the audio mode. So I'm going to turn record enable off on that track. And so now we're going to look at how the new retrospective MIDI record works. And this is actually even a layer cooler because you'll notice that here on my sample tank track, I don't even have uh, record enabled right now. I only have the echo. So you can hear my MIDI notes coming out of that. So I'm not even record enabled. So let's say I played back some stuff. Now I'm going to shift over here to my keyboard and I'm going to mute this microphone so you don't hear me slapping around on the keys. Um, and I'm just going to play some stuff. I'm not recording at all.
anybody who hasn't ever heard any jellyfish before, go check them out. That's from Calling Sarah. I'm sure it's exactly not exactly right. But that's what those chords are. So you'll see here on the screen now, of course, nothing is recorded because I'm not in record mode and I didn't choose to record anything. I'm going to come back here and you'll see over here in the inspector, I have retrospective recording. And you can see that that is the shift numpad plus the star if you wanted to use a keyboard shortcut for that. But if I click that, bang, there is all of the MIDI that magically got recorded. So let's go out here and hear what we've got here. Now you can, let's get rid of this, uh, this extra little bit of audio that we had going on up there. And you can hear in this MIDI, So that's all the video, um, <laughs> all the MIDI that I didn't actually record before has gotten magically recorded into that track. So what's really cool about that is that I didn't even have record enabled nothing. It's just kind of listening in the background. It's kind of like an iPhone or a um, Google phone or something like that. Constantly listening in the background. In this case, it's to our benefit. So here I've got the ability to capture all of that MIDI, even when I wasn't expecting that it was going to be recording. So a couple of cases where this can be super useful. One, a case like I just did, I just kind of played some stuff. I wasn't in record mode at all. My MIDI got recorded anyway, kind of in the background, and I could resurrect a part that I never even knew I was recording. Another case where that's useful is you've got something set and you're ready to record it, but you hit play instead of record and you thought you were actually recording and you were playing some really cool parts along and you didn't actually record the part. This is going to save that. And other cases where you might find this useful are the cases where maybe you've set a punch region and you started playing outside of that punch region and you're afraid that you lost all of that. So now we have the ability to get all of those things back through uh, the retrospective MIDI record. This is going to be a very useful feature for me for all of those times where I've had kind of that uh, lapse of uh, common sense and I didn't hit record, and I thought I had lost that part. In the past, I would have with Studio One 5.1. I'm not going to lose those parts anymore. This is going to be an awesome feature. Again, as I referenced at the beginning of this, it's real important to me that you subscribe, like, or share this video. Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, and have a great weekend. Yeah.